Hi, I'm Frank Jordan, creator and writer of Company Man Comic. You can find me on Twitter at Frank in the Lou, Instagram at Toon Man AZ, Patreon at Toon Man AZ, and you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talk. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a long time friend. And, and I stipulate this because I've known him for at least 10 years plus online, but I've never ever had him on the show and that is completely my fault i apologize in advance because you know i'm <laughs> canadian and all that from a political comic to satire to everything in between we are joined by the ever talented creator of company man comic frank jordan how are you doing today i'm good man how are you <laughs> doing good doing good this is just amazing we've known each other for so long digitally <laughs> this is our first time conversing i can't wait to dive into your comic can't wait to dive into yourself as a creative person but thank you again for being on the oh show. thanks for having me for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person though tell us who you are and what you're bringing to two geeks talking well my I'm, my name is frank jordan i'm the creator the head writer <laughs> everything of company man comic i love to bring the funny and make light of things that are very serious sometimes. I do total lines sometimes, but some things I just won't talk about. <laughs> everything else is fair game, though. Yeah, everything is fair game. I mean, no one's safe. <laughs> I, I, I get everybody. If, if you do or say something dumb, you might end up in my comic strip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will try to avoid anything like that. <laughs> you know that that's what i love about about your style you you're consistent you have a great comic style you know you have a very unique style as well too whenever i see you, your posts online especially in fast social media feeds i know it's your work because it's distinct it's out there and it's just perfect for you know making me laugh when the world is taking a shit <laughs> <laughs> i love to hear that i love to make people laugh uh, that is like my main thing. I think I was put on this earth to do that, make people laugh and smile. Especially when they read my comic. If I get, if I don't do comics for a week, like which this past week I just I took a week off, and you know people were even though I posted it that I won't be making any strips this week, this past week, people think I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I, I like to bring that I, 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 like, I like to make sure everybody knows I'm not dead I'm just taking a little bit of time off to recharge <laughs> yeah you, you have to I mean you can't be on all the time <laughs> you can't it, it, it's, it's impossible you know unless you're the rock or <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy's on all the time I mean I do love his cheat days I have to admit that that's a guilty <laughs> pleasure <laughs> yeah. I mean I can't eat that stuff but you know, no no it's, it's impressive most, to say the least. Most of us eat the stuff that he that he eats. It would anyway. it would probably kill us, or we'd be like a thousand pounds. <laughs> what is the most misunderstood aspect about the political cartoons and satire that people who don't follow them misunderstand? Uh, I think they misunderstand because they want you to lean a certain way. The uh, misunderstanding comes from when you, when you make a a certain comic and it's it's kind of pumping a person up that you're attacking. They're like, oh, so you're for this guy? I'm like, no, no, I just need to set that up so you can take him down later. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's a delicate balance, uh, I like to say. What's the hardest part about comedy, especially in comics in today's world? Because I think that's one thing that can be divisive, I should say, um, and split the, the aisle type situation where you're trying to be consistent in, in your message and your comic style before panel act. How has it changed from when you started Company Man Comic to today's standard? Well, back in the day, you could definitely be more biting. My comic is very current. It's very uh, in the now, what's going on right now. It's immediately dated as soon as the next day comes. From back then when I used to, I would never sleep basically because I'm always trying to get the first the first comic out. And I've learned, I'm like, I can't keep, I can't keep that up. So, you know, I'll, I may do something that happened a couple of days ago and people like, or, or, or actually, if I don't do something like immediately, people like, oh, you need to do a comic on this. I'm like, I'm already on it. 
<laughs> this comic landscape, it's easy to get canceled. You definitely got to, like I said, toe the line on what you can and cannot say and what's funny. Well, let's just say I'm on my sixth go round with Twitter. I've been banned five times. <laughs> What was the first time? First time I got banned, I think I made I made fun of oh, oh Matt Gates. <laughs> I made fun of Matt Gates, and uh, I think his people didn't like it because I, that's how I know they've seen it. <laughs> oh, oh, you've seen this, and then you get that little message from Twitter that oh, you said something, and uh, you need to basically they basically told me to apologize, and I said I'm not apologizing. And then I made fun of Twitter for sending me that. <laughs> I was like, well, this is going to be a banning right here. <laughs> it feels like the uh, the old guy in The Simpsons. That's a banning. That's a banning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've had a wonderful long career. When you first started this comic, what was your what was your concept? And what was the first thought that came to mind when you started Company Man Comics? Well, it was basically, I used to work for a media group. And I draw what I know. So it was, I, I was on a bus. I was in, living in Phoenix, Arizona. I was on a bus and I didn't know what the, like, what's my next thing going to be? I'm on a bus and I look out and we stop next to this skyscraper, basically. And these guys were out in front of the place uh, with their suits and ties and they were hacky sacking. <laughs> and I was like, that's it that's the that's the comic it's these four dudes and that's basically what i started with these four guys just went off from there and when when was that when did you start this that was in 2000 wow Tw 23 years of making a comic. 23 years <laughs> how have you survived i mean besides coffee and you know whatever illegal drugs are available <laughs> I, I, and I don't know. I mean, it's, it's I, I must, I eat the souls of babies. <laughs> so you work for Twitter support? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> 23 years of a comic, wonderful family supporting you. Have they made it into the comic or at least the comments they've made, you know, off camera, so to speak, have made it into the comic? Yeah, my grandsons have made it in. They were in like one when it, when there was two. Now there's four. So now I got I got to figure out a way to work the other two. <laughs> so I mean, they love it. My my son when he when he first read it, his, he he let his friend read it, and his friend's like, "Dude, your dad just doesn't give a rip, does he? He just goes after everyone." <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, he does that." You know, it, it's it's fun. I mean, when when family members make it in, they're like, "Oh, you gotta draw me doing this." I'm like, "No, no, no, no. I draw you doing what I want you to do." <laughs> but you know, you you don't make you don't make that request. Character creation is rather unique as well, too, because you're you're hitting the key points of. And I'm gonna look at your lower third currently here. Crackpot Q, the. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the good old Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, your imagery is just iconic. Like, if you were to start a Discord channel, these should be your your emotes. I mean, this this would be <laughs> perfect for it. Like, quite literally. Well, there's there's somebody that's on Truth Social, and they're using my Trump hair character to troll people on Truth Social. I, I don't know who it is because they send me a comic. They they send me their posts. Um, anonymously, so I still don't know who it is, but I'm like, keep up the good work because it, it's it's awesome what he's doing or what she's doing. I don't know who it is, <laughs> but I, I just think that is so funny. Besides keeping relevant, because obviously news changes every single hour. You you can't obviously, like you said, keep up with it personally here, and you're kind of going back from a few days before. Does this still energize you or does it drain you when you either can't meet a deadline or when you have an idea, but you can't just get it out on time? It, it is kind of draining, especially if I have an idea that I really can't get out. But normally it, it's uh, like right now I'm watching MSNBC right now. When this whole, the whole Trump indictment thing happened, I was like over the moon. So I'm like, oh, this is going to provide me with awesome okay. ideas for a long time <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of draining like i said i took a week off because i'm like oh, they're just doing this debt ceiling thing i'm like ah that's not important to me 
I have enough debt as it is. It doesn't need a ceiling. Uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, eliminate my debt. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, so much for the working class, right? Yeah. <laughs> Right. Like us normal people. <laughs> I, I have to make comics to survive. You just have, yeah. you know, sponsors. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> the comic convention scene has also changed a lot here as well, too. Talk about when you started going to comic conventions, showcasing Company Man to where it is today, because besides the pandemic that kind of gave us a three-year gap, how else have you evolved, not only the promotion of the comic, but what has been the reaction from, say, fans, not only online, but face-to-face -face with the comic well, itself? It's, it's been awesome. I mean, the, the, the whole pandemic thing is, is it's, it's kind of like the blip in Marvel movies. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody's like, what were you doing before, you know, the end times? <laughs> but, you know, going to, going to these Comic-Cons has been it's been awesome. I mean, I love San Diego Comic Con. I love the local Comic Con, Phoenix Comic Con. I'm, I did like a couple of panels, and it was my like first time signing an autograph. You know, and that, that's like it's like catnip. It's like you once you, once you have it, once it happens, you're gonna want it again and again. You know, people come up to me. Um, people found me at San Diego Comic Con, and that's huge. Like walking through the crowd, they're like, "Oh my God, it's it's Frank." Or, or it's you, <laughs> <laughs> or, or they they'll say, "You are Connor, aren't you?" I'm like, that, that, he's loosely based on me. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, let's talk about your characters as well too. You have a large cast of characters, but who are some of the main characters, and who are some of your favorites that you just love to go back to? Well, my favorite characters are, I mean, it's it's Ron, the guy with the huge fro, uh, Connor. You got Eddie. And he's the he's the blind one, and Colin. He's he's our staff Republican. <laughs> I mean, he's the butt of many jokes. I mean, he gets beat up a lot, <laughs> but you know, as he should, because <laughs> he's a turd. <laughs> <laughs> the turd will that become a character? Uh, uh, well, actually, I do. <laughs> there are a couple of turds in there. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Um, I drew Kaylee McEnany as a turd. Any of Trump's women in his life are usually turds, except for except for Melania. She's the hamburger because she, she steals. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love I love the the character. I always have to figure out who I'm going to draw somebody a high profile uh, person as George Santos. You know, the liar. I drew him as an elephant liar like the instrument <laughs> <laughs> i draw heavily from like doonesbury was one of my is one of my favorite comic strips of all time i got a chance to meet gary he loved it he was like dude keep this up it, it was awesome the fact that you had a, a, a mentor and an inspiration tell you to keep going like that that must have put you on cloud nine for the oh next. my god I, you couldn't tell me nothing it was <laughs> it was great where, where did you meet him? At Comic Con, actually, <laughs> and it was it was outside of it. It was in the gas lamp. I was at this restaurant. And I'm like, that's Gary Trudeau. <laughs> so so I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go and say something to him, and we start talking. He's like known for not going anywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That that's amazing. Yeah. We have similar friends in, in the webcomic community and in, in those scenes here as well, too. Being in the industry as long as you have and being an independent creator, who have you kept in touch with and connected with, either with crossover events or maybe just, you know, shared ideas and bounced uh, ideas off of each other? Yeah, uh, Lucas Turnblum. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Um, I mean, great friend of mine. I mean, I love that guy. You know, every time we're at Comic Con, we do the drink and draw with him, Tom Racine, yeah. who's doing these amazing voiceovers and poetry now. Oh God, man! <laughs> at a time, I did know Scott Adams, and <laughs> I knew he was a, I knew he was a, a, a jerk because <laughs> he was a jerk when I met him. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, he doesn't want to help black people anymore. I'm like, no one was asking for your help. <laughs> I'm sorry, did, did I have a t-shirt that said, you know, I need help? Right. I was like, um, I'm like, no, I never asked you for help, dude. 
also uh, George Gant, who just got a Web Comic Award, a Glyph Award. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, I've, I've known him for. I've known all these guys for years. <laughs> It's a small community. I mean, we, I mean, when I started this in 2008, like I was interviewing all these, all the webcom creators because that's all I had connection to. And, you know, just see where they, where they came from and to where they are today. You know, some are working in DC and Marvel. Others are still doing amazing works with their independent uh, comics like yourself as well. Like, it's just great to see that this community still supports each other, you know, no matter what the case may be and to share and showcase, especially on social media, how, why do you keep doing this? Why do you keep doing this comic? I keep doing it because it's kind of my baby. It came at a time when I wasn't drawing. I I, I took like three years off of drawing. An ex-girlfriend of mine gave me a, like a, a like a little drawing, a moleskin book. And she's like, draw your truth. That's what I do it for. And you're here. You're still here. You're still going strong. You definitely have enough content to last, last your lifetime. And then some, I'm sure. At, at last count, I've done over 3,800 comics. So there's a, there's a couple of books in there. <laughs> are, are we going to see an, an, omni, an omnibus uh, of your, your series so far? Hey, hopefully. I, I'm what they call lazy. I don't want to. I don't want to do a book myself. I'm like I might have a I might have a ghost writer. <laughs> <laughs> put together my put the put together my uh, treasury. That's <laughs> why don't you do a digital collection of everything? You're you know, like, I think I think I'm, I think I might do that. Yeah. You know, because that'll that I can get that out to a wider audience, and I've already had already have the title for it and everything. Oh, now so, now I have to ask what, what what is it? Or are you keeping that a secret? No, I can I can say it. Um, I don't think anybody's gonna steal it. <laughs> you know, it's a, I did I did a comic back in I want to say 2015, and <laughs> it was about the uh. KFC had a sandwich. It was a sweet sandwich, but it was kind of like the double down. Yeah. But there was a sweet version of it, and and I, <laughs> the line in the comic was, "We're all going to die a sweet and chickeny death," <laughs> <laughs> because you know everyone's going to eat this thing, and we're all going to die from it. So. <laughs> Do you want to die of old age or diabetes? I mean, that's right. kind of like six of one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, what's the phrase? I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. Yeah. I am here for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, most of that involves, you know, eating chicken, I guess. Huh? <laughs> what was the first experience where you learned that language had power? Oh, uh, I, I was living in Arizona. I drew a comic strip and made fun of the gov- then governor, Jan Brewer. I had uh, drew, drawn her as a dumb, prickly old cactus. I didn't think, you know, anybody would have, any, anybody important would have seen it, but no, her office seen, seen it and uh, threatened me with litigation. <laughs> they, just, they just wanted me to stop talking about her. But I was like, now you guys realize, now I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> so they, they just kept going along with it. If they ignored it, it would have been fine, but no, they couldn't. They couldn't leave it alone. So I'm like, well, now you, you come after me. I'm going to come after you. It's the Chicago way. <laughs> <laughs> like it's no longer about baseball bats and cement shoes. It's about you know online comics. <laughs> right, exactly. That, that's when I, that's when I knew. I was like, okay, my comic strip is reaching people, and you know some people don't like it. I got the entire membership of the NRA mad at me for an entire summer. I called their their spokeswoman, Dana Leish, Loesch, or however you say her last name. I called her a filthy dick bag. You know, it's not bad, but she responded with a God bless. And I was like, not, I, I responded with a, hey guys, that filthy dick bag saw my comic. <laughs> and I was the subject of so much hate mail and it, constant NRA podcast. They were talking about that clown in St. Louis. <laughs> I was like, let your hate flow through you. Yes, I live on this. Let's go. 
Excellent Smithers. Excellent. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> You're usually asked, what's the wisest piece of advice or what's the most bullshit piece of advice you've ever received? But what is the second wisest piece of advice that you've ever received that has stuck with you in your career? Keep drawing. That's it. I mean, that's someone just says, keep drawing. <laughs> there was a time I met, I met, you know, Sparky and Charles Schultz. And I asked him, you know, my name is Frank, is Franklin drawn? You know, for me, he goes, possibly. <laughs> and it, it was, it was, it was a great meeting. And yeah, he, he told me to just keep drawing, keep, keep it up, keep going. You almost need to have a, a retrospective of people that have have inspired you and given you that positivity to keep going. Like I, I even just something out of the blue, just something like a collage of, of people that have, uh, you know, put you on this amazing path that you've had, whether they're still with us or not. And I think that would be a, a wonderful post to have. So if you mm-hmm. find it, if you find it in your, in your break to just, yeah, draw something simple and quick and whatever, I think that would be a, a great benefit to those that have supported you throughout the years. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> that, that way it's not negative and you know, you're still having a good time with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with this stuff in, in a com- comedic aspect that you do is, is wonderful, but it's got to take its toll on you though. It, it does. I mean, sometimes I, I just get like really tired, mostly of people's bullshit, but <laughs> I, I get really tired and I was like, you know what? is this even worth doing making fun of these people? Cause they just, they'll just keep doing and saying stupid things. But then again, I was like, well, that fuels me. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, keep saying and doing dumb things because I'm going to keep making fun of you for it. And I tell people, it's like, if you think you're living rent free in my head, think about this. I'm a slum Lord. <laughs> I will use that to my advantage. It's like, you ain't living rent free in my head. No, 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 no. You're trapped in here with me. <laughs> That's what you got to deal with. Yeah, you should have played Rorschach in the, in the uh, Watchmen <laughs> series. Totally. Like, <laughs> as good as that actor was, I think you would have been much better. You know? <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying you're crazy or anything. I'm just saying, like, you know. Oh, no, there's, 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 a, there's a part of that. <laughs> Yeah, I used to I used to do stand up comedy, so you know you got to be a little crazy to do it. So. You just segued into a completely different direction <laughs> here now. Craziest comedy experience in stand up that you had? Meeting Chris Rock and Jerry Seinfeld at one of my shows that I opened. Damn. They I, I was at the comedy store in L.A. and uh, I got got done with my set, and I was in the green room. In steps Jerry Seinfeld. And Chris Rock, I was speechless. It, w- it was it was so surreal, and I'm like, is this actually happening? <laughs> you know, they come in and they're Chris Rock and Jerry Seinfeld are exactly that. They are who you see on stage is who you see in front of you. They are amazing, and they had a couple of notes and basically punching up a couple of my couple of my jokes. That's it, and. It was awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy legends and icons in that right. regard. And they just had a couple of notes to punch up your jokes. Like- yeah, just a couple of notes to punch up my jokes. And I'm like, um, yeah, after that, you couldn't tell me anything. I was like, yeah, that was a cloud nine moment right there. This now reinforces the positivity comic collage you need to put together. Because <laughs> you've just listed four people already that have given you inspiration to keep going with what you're doing. If that isn't a strong enough message to say you're on the right path in life, I'm just going to stop right here because this the, that's it. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, this this whole uh, writer strike thing and and that's going on in LA right now. So I had, uh, well, my intellectual property was wanting to be purchased by Universal. Flew out to LA and everything to have meetings. That writer strike happened. That first one that right happened, they canceled all meetings. And they said they're gonna reschedule, but they never rescheduled. So <laughs> but I figure if it happened once, it can happen again. Look, the fact that you got into that 
step into that door. Right. That's that's just a given right there. And all you have to do is keep on on promoting it and uh, yeah, in a way. some some somebody will see it again. You're like, hey, we want to we want we want to buy your intellectual property, but see, Universal was wasn't trying to give me back in their phone. They just want to take my property. Like, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah. And, and change so, it to whatever the hell they want. Yeah, I'll say you can make it. You're gonna give me eighty thousand dollars for my intellectual property, and you're gonna make millions with it. No, nah, I don't think so. I, I need a. I need to wet my beak a little bit. <laughs> I need. I need percentages, not not right. a, not a lump sum. Yeah, that's gonna... what the money is. It's on the back end. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if George Lucas can do it, uh, you know it. Exactly. I, I want that George Lucas money. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have to sell your soul to Disney, but like, you know, it True. is what it is. Is that really a bad thing? You'd be a princess. I mean, yeah, next, next thing you know, Jar Jar Binks is in my comic strip for some reason. <laughs> where, where are you the mouse ears, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Everyone usually has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? My mother. She, uh, she basically told me I can basically do whatever I want. And I'm trying not to cry. Jeez, you're going to have an Oprah moment here. Take your time. Just <laughs> She basically like said, um, you can do whatever you want. She basically told me the world is mine. <laughs> yeah that's it yeah she she basically told me the world is mine i can do whatever i want just just don't be an asshole <laughs> and that was my mom in a nutshell very supportive but she will clown on you if possible <laughs> that's just love yeah and i got my i got my sense of humor sense of humor from from her because she was the kind of I, I will talk about you even if you're right in front of me. <laughs> from a professional standpoint, you have done twenty some odd years of gritting comics. You've been a stand up comedian. You have done so much in your lifetime and you have been successful in that regard. Do you consider yourself personally successful? I do. I mean, from the time I, I, I was also an ordinary DJ in St. Louis, so, <laughs> so um, I've I've done a lot. I've had a, I've had a lot of like great jobs, awesome jobs. Got to meet a ton of people. They have a lot of great experiences, mainly because I don't I don't like to say no to any experience if it's not going to kill me. If it's going to kill me, I'm saying no all day. Like when people say, "Hey, Frank, do you want to go camping?" I'm like, "No." I work too hard to pretend I'm homeless. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. if it's not going to kill me, I I do it. You know, because those opportunities lead to like everything. Meeting Charles Schultz, that was just an opportunity. Meeting Gary Trudeau, it was an opportunity that I saw. I took it. So then, who's someone you want to meet? Uh, someone I want to meet. Oh man, Dave Chappelle. I would love to meet Dave Chappelle. I just love to talk to him, pick his brain. <laughs> Man, that guy is, is just awesome. He's hilarious. He's inspired a couple of comic strips that I've done. I, ju I just want to meet him. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Take it with a grain of salt. It gives me an opportunity to get better. I mean, that's if someone gives me any kind of constructive criticism. I'm all about that. Like if somebody says, hey, your comic sucks. And I'm like, well, why does it suck? Give me a reason why it sucks so I can get better. That's the only way I'm going to get better. I mean, and those who don't provide constructive criticism, you know, I will go after them. I'm like, oh, oh, so, so do I come to your job and knock the penis out of your mouth? You know, it's just constructive criticism is very important to anybody's development process. The problem is though, with constructive criticism, not everyone can actually give proper constructive criticism. True, like, like some people think, think they're being constructive, 
And I'm like, and I'll be the first to call that out. I'm like, oh, that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> I was like, give me something that I can work off of. I, I get it all the time when people's like, you know, you're like, well, somebody called me an untalented hack online on Twitter. And I was like, sir, um, or ma'am, I don't know what you are, and I, I don't care, but if it's one thing that I'm not, I am not untalented. I'm a very talented hack. (laughs) (laughs) But that's just expertise and experience of 20 years of basically pent up comedic rage. There you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. Please please do. (laughs) Quote quote the Canadian on that one. That'll be uh, that'll that'll work out well. And uh, just put me as a put me as a maple leaf, you know, and a maple leaf. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll put you... <laughs> Ma- maple leaf with glasses. If you can do that, that'd be a, that'd be great. Oh, done, <laughs> done, totally. Yay! It only took twenty years for you to get on the show, and you know, well, uh, now I can become a character. I love. <laughs> I'll put you in there as my as as, as my Canadian conscience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Even if it's just like on a shoulder or something, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm fueled by maple syrup and uh, a Canadian goose is my uh, is my devil. So, <laughs> did it make a, a maple flavored Canadian goose? <laughs> well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, the the devil in Canada is a cobra chicken. So you know, the cobra chickens. <laughs> yeah. Love that. <laughs> Well, we we have we have a we have a lot of geese here in in, in Missouri and St. Louis, and there's a road called Page Boulevard. So there's lakes, like in just weird places, <laughs> and these geese will walk out into the street. Mm-hmm. And now Page is a major thoroughfare; mm-hmm. they stop traffic. And I, I was behind this guy. He gets out and tries to herd the geese back onto the sidewalk. Yeah, good luck. And they started attacking them. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah. I, as he was doing this, I'm like, dude, don't do this. Don't no, no, you don't want the smoke. You don't want the smoke. And then they just start flapping their wings and coming at him. And he just runs back into his car. Yeah. yeah. You can lose an eye. It's yeah. <laughs> I was like, do not mess with these geese. They will destroy you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually uh if you um it's illegal to hunt them in Canada. Oh yeah, they're protected here yeah. too. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm like <laughs> These things are huge. I'm like, they're the size of a small kid. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to hurt those? Mm-mm. No. <laughs> Especially if they have their chicks around. Yeah, you, you are not oh. getting within five feet of them. Yo, no, you're done. You're done. <laughs> they're you're gonna make take... an example out of you. <laughs> yeah, you're taking your life into your own hands. Even the police will just say, "Yep, death by goose." All right, let's go to the donut shop. <laughs> The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way. And the fact that you have the younger generation with you, with your family, looking up to you as an inspirational person, maybe you're inspiring them to be creative in some way, shape, or form. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Basically, my, my mother told me, um, like before I, went, before I went to college, she's like, uh, I'm going to give you some life advice. And and that life advice was don't be an asshole. It it takes so much less energy to be nice than it does to be a dickhead to somebody. If you're mean to the generation behind you, they're going to be mean to the generation behind them. So you basically got to teach them, you know, just be nice to each other. Like Bill and Ted said, be good to each other. That's it. It's just as simple as that. And if, if, like I say, if you're nice, to, if, if like people are nice to me coming up, I want to be nice to people coming up after me. If your life was a comic book, what would its title be? And what would its soundtrack be? Oh. <laughs> the title would be, uh, it will be Funny Angst, The Life and Times of Frank George. <laughs> the soundtrack would be nothing but 90s alternative rock. <laughs> one of the forgotten decades, that's for sure. It was like one of the best decades for music, period, because every genre was hitting. Yeah, R&B was hitting. Uh, alt rock was like just emerging and it was just, it was awesomeness. Everything was hitting and it was great. Great time for music. 
You know, Frank, I hate to say this truly, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for finally coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. I, I, I'll, I'll come back anytime. Uh, and I'll have you anytime. <laughs> we, we we touched on just we we got a surface level Frank right here. Like we could easily dive into you so much more than we actually did here. Before I let you go though, where can we find you? How can we support you online? And of course, anything else you'd like to promote? Well, I, I have a Patreon page. Uh, just uh, uh, Tune Man, a uh, Tune Man AZ. Um, Instagram, I'm Tune Man AZ. On Twitter, I am Frank in the Lou. <laughs> Facebook, I'm everywhere. Uh, you name the platform, I'm on it. And apparently, um, some like I said, somebody is making fun of everybody on True Social with my Trump hair character. It's called <laughs> Trump's banging hair. <laughs> I, I, I will eventually do some kind of book, maybe a like a like a, like said a digital, a digital uh, like treasury. But I just gotta, you know, do it. I guess. Well, uh, you know what you and here's just a thought on on that actually before I, I wrap up and do a thousand collection per section. Find something that fits the gluttonous number of a thousand in your titles, and I think that would work out well. Mm, yeah, that would work. <laughs> Just call it gluttonous. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and 1,200 plus others on our website, twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two, because it's in my lower third. Thing. And of course, tgtmedia.com is the actual main site. Website's going through a review because I am only one person. Give me a break. So go to our YouTube channel. A lot more up to than our website. YouTube.com forward slash tgtmedia. The podcast is finally back after 12 or so years because you know reasons and that's two geeks talking podbean.com but search for two geeks talking on any of your podcast streaming services like itunes spotify iHeartRadio. radio like subscribe on those as well too and as i say every week everyone has a story to tell it's up to me to bring that out thanks for listening and watching on two geeks talking